Hello everyone and welcome to the Irish The Broad Show for this week. Uh, it's myself, Paul Tierney, and I'm joined by Jer Brown. Jer, how are we this week? Oh, good, Paul. Good to be back. Uh, we had our own international break there. Obviously, of course, no show last week because there wasn't really much happening with the international break. We're, we're back once again with another bonkers show this week. Probably the most Irish involvement, I think, in the Premier League so far this season, as we'll touch on lately uh, or later on. A lot of players starting, which is good to see. And obviously, a double game week, not just in the Championship, in League One and League Two. And we even had a couple of uh, European action already this week as well. So, uh, it has all the makings of a great show today. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We'll kick straight off into it anyway. Start off with the Premier League. Now, I've, I've just got an order of how I looked it up, so we'll just go with that anyway. i start off with Nathan Collins anyway. He played again for Burnley due to Ben Mee's injury. He played the full 90 in a 2-0 defeat to Man City, and he was rated very highly from what I've seen on both Twitter and other articles as well. Uh, a lot of people are saying he was Burnley's man of the match, and uh, look, if you only concede 2 to City at the Eddie had, that's probably a good day, really. Yeah, Burnley have had some horrible days down there. Uh, numerous occasions, I think they can see the four or five. So, yeah, it's probably not a bad result for them. Like, I think, realistically speaking, it's, it wasn't a result that was going to impact their season. I know they're still looking for their first win uh, of the campaign, but realistically speaking, I don't think they expected to come at the head on Saturday. And, yeah, as you said, like, he's, he's definitely taken his uh, opportunity so far. Nathan Collins caps off a good week from made his Ireland debut as well earlier on that week in that friendly against Qatar, now back-to-back Premier League games from as well, you know, taking advantage, as you said, of Ben Mee's injury. And like I said, getting a lot of strong reviews at the Burnley Express as man of the match with an 8 out of 10 rating, saying that he was outstanding, that he's really learned on the job, and but, and he's making a great impression so far. So hopefully it's a case of, I know obviously how well-trusted Ben Mee is with Sean Dyche, but when he does come back from injury, hopefully it won't be an easy decision for Sean Dyche to stop him straight back into the team, that he would have to scratch his head a little bit. I was going to say scratch his hair, but there's uh, there's not much on Sean Dyche's head. Sorry, sorry Sean, if you're watching. I don't mean that in a bad way. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I actually agree with you, to be honest. I think the only problem there is that Ben Mee is the club captain as well as actually being a genuinely very good, consistent player for the last couple of years as well. So I think Nathan might be... It might be tough for him to stay in because I'd say even Sean Deutsch will just want them back in, simple as. And then Tarkovsky is just a very good defender. I don't think he'll be at Burnley much longer. The way they're struggling at the minute anyway, and they need to start getting a few results together, and hopefully Nathan Collins is involved in that when it eventually does happen. Uh, I'll move on to uh, your crowd, Liverpool, 5-0 win over Watford, and Cuevy and Keller, another, another clean sheet this week. Yeah, a good week for him. Two clean sheets, two games, and probably didn't really have much to do in either match. Obviously, was given a start with the whole international situation with players coming back from South America. Uh, that Alison Becker obviously wasn't available for selection. And, you know, as I said, like I watched this game, and as I said earlier, it was, it was an easy enough afternoon from. Did I think at one stage he made a kind of a good save in the first half? Came in, what player, what for player was with two on goal? Trent Alexander Arnold gets back and makes a good challenge. So, how he makes a save. Even towards the end at 4-0, you know, concentration levels might have tended to drift off. He makes a fantastic save, tipping a shot from Sar onto the post and looked pretty calm, looked pretty composed. Uh, good reviews as well from local outlets in Liverpool. The Liverpool Echo giving them an 8 out of 10. Uh, the, uh, this is Anfield giving him a 7 out of 10 rating, saying that he was predominantly largely a spectator in this game. But as I mentioned, he was only kind of stepping in for, for Alison Becker because of the international situation. Becker was back in goals or Alisson, as he's better known as, for the Leicester Madrid game on Tuesday night. But Liverpool have a League Cup game against Preston next week. I expect them to start in that game. Uh, they're pretty much done and dust in the Champions League. You know, One more home win against the Leicester Madrid will see them through, which I think they'll be going all out to get it over and done with. And if results go their way between Porto and AC Milan, they'll even actually top the group. That. So that's two games left in the group. There's a possibility of two more games there. It'd be a good experience, you might think, to play in somewhere like the San Siro in a hostile atmosphere against an AC Milan team. They'll probably want to win. And just looking at the Christmas schedule that was released as well um, over the last couple of days, like Liverpool, I think, play in the 26th and the 28th. So possibility, I know maybe goalkeeper isn't one of the positions that would be highly thought of for squad rotation first. But... You know, possibility still that there could be more games coming up from um, yet, but like any time he's stepped in, he's done quite well. And it's got to be kind of thinking as well. Like, I know he's still number two with Ireland, but 
like he's for me, I think if it was a case if he wanted to leave Liverpool after in, in the pursuit of regular first team football, which I wouldn't blame him at this stage of his career because he's touching on in the mid twenties now at this stage. I think he'd get into most Premier League teams. Like, would you agree and go along with this? Like, as an Arsenal fan, I would say that he's a better goalkeeper than Aaron Ramsdale. Um, he has less experience anyway. I think over time he might develop into a better one. I didn't really rate Ramsdale at Sheffield United or Bournemouth because I think if you're a goalkeeper playing for the likes of a lower team, you're always going to be saving shots a lot of the time. So you're going, you're not going to save all of them, but you're definitely going to save some of them. So obviously he'd look like a good goalkeeper if he's getting tested in every game. I think with Arsenal he's done quite well. I think he's, I think he's a decent player. But again, I don't know. I think with time Kelleher could, with more experience, and maybe li- leaving Liverpool is the answer to that. Moving to another Premier League side, like even the likes of Norwich, like he, I wouldn't rate him that much uh, lower than Tim Carroll anyway. I'll say that much. So um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen enough of them to to make a statement on it. I think Ramsdale's played in the league the last two years and he's doing well with Arsenal now as well. So it's a tough one to call, but I wouldn't say it just yet, but maybe in a few years if he plays a bit more. Yeah, I think that's probably been probably a good point you've made. Like obviously Ramsdale has played more games and he's more experienced, he's more trusted, but like it's a as you say, a case is because Ramsdale is has at lower league clubs, he's got the opportunity, whereas I think if Kelleher decided to jump and lead Liverpool It'd be just easy he's experienced as mm-hmm. as Ramsdale like the light close and breaking through at Liverpool I still think it's quite slim because of I know obviously Alisson's injury record but his age profile is still very very strong he's still this size of 30 I think he's only 27 28 like he easily easily is another 8 to 10 years possibly to go at a good level we've seen longevity with goalkeepers I think yeah Maybe maybe that's a better point to make. I think he's got the potential to kick on to be a better goalkeeper than some young goalkeepers that are already out there in the Premier League that might be a little bit more experienced. Sorry that I just happened to pick on Aaron Ramsdale. No, 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 you're right. Listen, I mean, he's a young goalkeeper himself as well. And as I said, I didn't really rate him up until he actually joined us and he's proved that he's actually a good goalkeeper because, as I mentioned, if you're saving shots all the time, that doesn't make you a good goalkeeper. That makes your team a bad team, you know? <laughs> Like it's yeah. it's when it's when you have to make the saves when you're not being called upon. So that's that's what we need to be looking at. Um, we'll move on anyway. I'll go on to a uh, Norwich and Brighton anyway. A couple of Irish lads involved in this. Obviously Shane Duffy played the full ninety for Brighton again. Another clean sheet. Um, probably a bit disappointed with that draw overall, but he did make a clearance off the line. If you look back on it, it's from the American lad Brian Sargent. It looks like he doesn't hit the ball right at all. But Duffy gets back well and he does clear it. It's still a clearance off the line. But uh, yeah, and Adam Eda got on at the end again, 90 minute again, 90 minute again. Sure, what's the point coming on then, really? You've no time to make an impact. Yeah, it's, it's I think we touched on the last show as well. I think it's an absolute just waste of time. I think actually, if anything, it's an insult to that. Like, Norwich are severely struggling for goals this season. They've scored what I can't at the top of my head, but I'd say you could count all their goals they've scored this season on one hand. Like, team of Pukki, they're going off past reputation from him. I think I've touched on it that, like, I think he got found out quickly enough in the Premier League two seasons ago. He's two years older now. Like, I don't, I just don't get Like, in these situations, these type of games, Burnley away, Brighton at home, winnable games. Like, why aren't you throwing the kitchen sink a little bit more? Why aren't you bringing on the likes of Adam Mida a bit earlier in the game? 90th minute, like, the, like what, I don't know what was injury time, but what was said was only two minutes. No time to get involved or impact in the game or anything else like that. Brighton could have the ball. They could be happy to play out for a draw. Like, I just find it very, very annoying. Like, I think, I know fair enough he had a lot of injury and he had COVID, but I don't think Daniel Farrick has really managed Adam Mead that particularly well. Um, I think he should be getting, I'm not saying they should be starting, but I definitely think, like, in these type of games where you need goals and he's a striker, you should be bringing him on a little, a little bit more. Where's your ambition? Is it, is it any wonder Norwich already at this stage look like they're going to go down? And the afternoon from Shane Duffy on a, on a positive point of view, he did he did pick up yellow card in this game, but uh, got a 7 out of 10 rating from Sussex Eyes, saying that he didn't maybe look as good on the ball as maybe he had in previous weeks, but from his defensive joining his views, obviously got a couple of clearances, vital blocks in, and he's touched on that goal line clearance. Yeah, your man completely under hit that ball. I think all the time in the world to make that clearance. I don't think it was a an overly dramatic or impressive clearance, as Shane Duffy would say. But 
Brighton, yeah, they've just kind of slipped off a little bit. I know it's now two clean sheets in a row, but it's, it's three draws in a row. They've a little bit dropped off, but they're still obviously in a very, very healthy place. They've got obviously a massive test now against Manchester City on Saturday evening in front of the Sky Cameras. That'll be a good test for for Brighton and Shane Duffy. And hopefully maybe Aaron Connolly, Danny Welbeck is out for, for quite a while. Again, I don't expect Aaron to start. They've got a League Cup game next week. Maybe that's his chance to prove a point to Graham Potter. But hopefully maybe he can come off the bench and make an impact and he can work his way into his, into Potter's plans that way. Yeah, definitely a tough game for them as well, obviously, against City, who looked very, very strong the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, you, I just can't get over that that shot from your man. I just The more I look at it, the more mad I think it is. Just put your foot through yeah. it. Great yeah. from Shane Duffy, but like <laughs> I'd say he was loving it when he was getting back. Sure, he could stroll to this, like, you know. Um, we move on to the Sunday games anyway. Two involvements on my, my notes anyway. Seamus Coleman got the full 90 minutes on his return. In a 1-0 defeat to West Ham for Everton. Everton obviously missing a couple of their main men up top at the minute. So, a bit shot shy the last couple of weeks. And uh, Kieran Clark got the full 90 minutes against Spurs. And he also got a yellow card in that game. Started well for Newcastle that game. But ultimately, same old, same old. Yeah, it wasn't uh, an afternoon or a game. I think Kieran Clark would want to rewatch much. He himself and, LaSalle, himself and Jamal LaSalle quite heavily. I'd fall for Newcastle's first two goals in this game. I think it was a pretty poor afternoon from, from Carrick standing. Um, only given a four out of ten rating from the Chronicle Live. They never really seemed to give him much of a rating anyway. And they never really seemed to give much in-depth info on his performance. All they gave this time was just given a tower of time, but the Spurs attack now was pretty true. But I suppose if you're looking for in-depth, it doesn't really give you much of an insight. It is a weird one because we obviously were talking to originally Jonathan from Newcastle Fans TV. Obviously, that didn't uh, see the light of day due to technical issues. And then we we're talking to Carl, and they were both big fans of him. I was chatting to a Geordie as well, who just happened to be over in Dublin for a few days in a pub in Dublin before the Qatar match. And he was also of the same opinions. You know, big fan of Clark, you know, that he's honest. Uh, sometimes he might make a mistake that he's out, but for other parts of the games, he's very, very good. But you know, I can kind of see why Stephen Kenny doesn't kind of go from when you look at the likes of, you know, Omo Bamadeli, how he's impressed so far. Again, another player I can't understand is not getting more game time at Norwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nathan Collins now looks like in 12 months time he could be a Premier League regular. Darryl Shea when he comes back from injury. You know, Clark didn't have the best of October international windows. And, and so far this season, from what I've seen and what I've heard, don't think he's really playing himself into, back into contention for Ireland. And yeah, for Seamus Coleman, obviously disappointing afternoon for Everton, their first home defeat this season. Still been a pretty good start to the season for them. They would have been disappointed if that was a banana skin against West Ham. But good to see him back. His first appearance in five weeks, I think, since the pit Burnley. And the first game back since the last international break. Uh, six out of ten rating from the Liverpool world. They had no, um, no insight on it, just that they gave each player a rating at the end of their report. So, um yeah, that's, uh, that's the roundup for the Premier League. As I said, probably the most involvement and counting up there. I think it's five starters. And then if you include Admeda's briefest of appearances, six players, probably is the highest so far this season. I don't expect this weekend to reach the heights again, obviously, because it, I think it's unlikely Kelleher will play again. But uh, good to see a little bit more positivity, you know, from compared to where we were a couple of weeks ago, where it was usually just one or two. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And you think even Matt Doherty will probably get a game tonight for Spurs against Vitez Arnhem. He's, he's out injured. Oh, he's out injured, is he? Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry, well, then he won't get a game then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I look at the weekend as well. Norwich are away to Chelsea. Either definitely won't play in that. Uh, I'm sure Farka will try and get a, a 4-0 defeat and he'll be happy with that, by the way. But, um, Do you reckon Omar Van Dele could play in that game? Because they might... I Not 100%. I don't watch an awful lot of Norwich, so maybe you can... St- jump in here i'm not overly familiar with their formations and stuff like that but you'd be inclined to think as you said this is going to be a backs against the wall type of job mm-hmm. get more cover get more defenders build more of a wall you know add in an extra central back there well i think so i was looking at their starting 11 there on saturday just because i i always kind of look at the or if the Irish players are starting especially in the premier league and they were playing a back five and he wasn't involved so i mean Maybe he just doesn't fancy him. He just doesn't fancy the two Irish lads. And yeah. it's it's unfortunate. Like he played him against the Baumiang against Arsenal. I mean, like a Baumiang, okay, he's got three goals so far this season, but he hasn't been the Abaumiang of 
you know, a couple of seasons ago where he was banging them in. So I don't know what he was trying to match up there. I'd probably prefer him against the likes of Lukaku because he's a bit like he's a good footballer and he's physical as well. But Lukaku is obviously out injured now, so he won't be up against them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he should be involved regardless. I mean, you've seen Ozan Kabak. I mean, he's not up to much. He's coming from Schalke, who's just been relegated as well. And then he was at Jews because he's were so stuck for defenders last year, you know. I mean, he's not yeah, up to much. A, so A Schalke yeah. team that ends up with possibly one of the worst records the Bundesliga has ever seen. And as you say, when you, when you think back to, to last season, like Nat Phillips, nothing against the poor lad here and he else like that, but he stood out and... Uh, and got a lot more praise and credit than Ozan come back. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I agree. Um, will we move on into the championship? Do you want to do the championship? or? Uh, yeah, I can take us through the weekend, and then you can take us through midweek. Now, I printed off my notes last night, so I don't have last night's um, involvement. I have looked at it, so I've, you know, it's, some of it's there from memory, but maybe if you have it, you might be able to take us through that as well. So, yep. As yeah, I said, course. we'll start with the weekend. So the Friday night game was at West Midlands Derby between West Brom and Birmingham. And Callum Robinson played 45 minutes this game. He actually got taken off at halftime. And Jason Malumbi came on for the last 28 minutes for West Brom as they won this game 1-0. Uh, Scott Hogan played 78 minutes of this contest for Birmingham. Robinson, as expected because he only played 45 minutes, generation from the Birmingham Mail. Malumbi, much more impressive ratings, a 7 out of 10. Uh, rating and a couple of quotes in he is a player that West Brom fans will get to like and obviously as we'll touch on midweek segment he can now add his first start for the Albion to his collection uh, Scott Hogan got a 6 out of 10 rating from the Birmingham Mail Jimmy Dunn was introduced in the 66 minute for QPR and received the yellow card 4 minutes later so a quick introduction for him <laughs> they were hammered 4-1 uh, Craven Cottage by Fulham in a West London derby he got a 5 out of 10 rating for from the West London Sport, uh, saying that he was um, a fault for their third goal for not following Reed. Um, I presume that's Bobby De- Decker mm-hmm. Reed. I presume they're on about there. Uh, David McGoldrick scored the winner for Sheffield United in their two win over Stoke City. Uh, he actually assisted their first goal in this game. They came from behind, and then the Stevens provided the assist for his goal, which I touched on as was the match winner. And a, a brilliant impact from McGoldrick in this game because he was only introduced. In the 77 minutes, so in the space of 13 minutes, he provided winner, and no surprise, he came away with an 8.5 rating from the star, saying talk about an impact. Uh, John Egan also started this game uh, along with Ender Stevens, and Connor Hurrahan was introduced as a substitute in the 71st minute. Egan got a 7 out of 10 rating, 7.5 for Stevens, and 6.5 for McGoldrick, who also actually had a hand in that goal as well. Uh, Alan Brown. And Jason Knight, uh, Alan Brown obviously for uh, Preston and Jason Knight for Derby, uh, played at the full 90 minutes as both sides played out in nil-nil draw. Uh, the Lancashire Post gave Brown a 5 out of 10 rating. And the Derbyshire Derby Telegraph gave Knight a 6 out of 10 uh, rating, saying he had a couple of eye-catching surges with the ball in the opening 45 minutes and put in a real shift. Good to see from Jason Knight, and we'll obviously have more of him to come later on the show. Richard Keogh played the full 90 minutes as Blackpool lost 2-1 away to Nottingham Forest. Dan McNamara played 55 minutes for Millwall, while Glenn Ray played 90 minutes for Luton as the latter bet the former there 2-0. And the news that then gave McNamara 4.5 out of 10 rating, so maybe not the best of afternoons for the centre-back there. Uh... Sammy Smellix, Jack Taylor both played 90 minutes and both picked up yellow card each as Preston lost 2 0 away to Middles. Um, both players were given a 5 out of 10 rating by the by Peterborough today. And still continuing with the weekend. Jesus, there was a lot from the weekend. Um, Mark Travers and Gavin Kilkenny both played 90 minutes as Bournemouth won 2 0 uh, away to Bristol City. This was Gavin Kilkenny's first game for Bournemouth since the 24th of August. So good to see him back in contention. And he got a 9 out of 10 rating from Dorset Live. Again, really, really impressed with him. And saying even a Gavin Kilkenny fans club has actually been set up, uh, which is good to see and shows how much <laughs> the Bournemouth faithful have bought into him. And out of 10 rating, again, saying not a great deal to do, but overall, in general, he was very good in commanding his box. And Calum Adauda was on the losing side here. Uh, he started for Bristol City, but he was replaced at half time in this game. But still came away with a 6 out of 10 rating from the Bristol Post. And 
says that he actually had a pretty good impact in this game. He actually set up a good chance for Wales to possibly equalise for Bristol City in the 38 minutes. That could have possibly changed the game, but Bournemouth continued their unbeaten start and top of the table. Darrell Lenehan played in Blackburn's 2-2 draw at home against Coventry. Of course, they were tuning it up in this game and he got a 6 out of 10 rating from Langs Live. We seem to be full of them in the championship this weekend. The South Wales derby. Ryan Manning picked up a yellow card for a dive. Uh, but Swansea still trashed local rivals card of 3 0 and still walked away with an 8 out of 10 rating from Wales Online, uh, saying that he made a couple of important clearances, uh, had more time on the ball as the game progressed, which ensured him to play, uh, enabled to play the role in a controlling performance. Mark McGuinness and James Collins were on the losing side here. McGuinness played the full game. Collins was introduced as sub for the last 23 minutes, and McGuinness was given the Cardiff man the match by Wales online, giving him a 5 out of 10 rating, saying a generally assured performance uh, from the out of position wing back. Yeah, he does seem to be played more in a full back wing back position as opposed to his natural uh, centre back position. But that's the second time that Wales online have praised him for playing out of position and that he's done really well. Collins was given his 4 out of 10 rating and it just seems to be a copy and paste job of him every week. Tries his best, but no end product. And it looks like Mick McCarthy is probably on borrow time there because they lost again to Fulham last night. So that's now seven defeats in a row for Cardiff and they're just above the relegation zone. So a lot to get through there, Paul. A lot to get through, but uh, a lot of action. And that's what we want to see. That's when we see what we want to see a bit more in the Premier League as well. But uh, look, good to hear lads are involved and uh, especially the Sheffield United lads, the Fordham seem to be in the uh in a lot of the time as well maybe Connor Horahan's the only one who's not really in so uh yeah great great to hear and uh we can move on into the the Tuesday and Wednesday night action anyway start off with Tuesday uh Jason Knight got a golden and assist in a two-all draw with Luton Town Fessy Ebersele played for Derby also and Glenn Ray also played for Luton Town in that game as yeah, well. yeah I should say uh Fessy uh, baby Fessy sorry surname again uh, Ebersele Episode, sorry, I should say he actually also played for Derby in that nil nil draw uh, against Preston as well at the weekend. Sorry, I left that one out. No butter, no butter. Um, we move on Tuesday again. Jimmy Dunn got the full 90 and was involved in a clean sheet for QPR in their 1 0 win at Loftus Road against Blackburn. Darrell Lennon was also involved for the Blackburn Rovers side at Loftus Road there. Uh, Connor Horahan, David McGoldrick, Enda Stevens, and John Egan all played in the 2 1 defeat to Millwall at Bramall Lane for Sheffield United. Um, Mark Travers, he got a six clean sheet from six, and Gavin Kilkenny played in their 1 0 win over Stoke on Tuesday. Also, another good win for Bournemouth. They're looking very strong contenders for going up this year automatically. Um, where are we? Have a few more Wednesday night or last night. Sorry, Jack Taylor got a wonder goal. I don't know if you've seen it on our channel. A wonder goal for Peterborough and their 2 1 win over Hull, both down the end of the table. There, a big win for Peterborough. Um, Alan Brown got an assist for Preston in their 2-1 win over Coventry City. And uh, Callum Robinson got an assist in West Brom's 2-1 defeat to Swansea. Uh, Ryan Manning wasn't involved there, but Jason Malumbi did get his first start, as you mentioned, and uh, got a yellow card as well, played 79 minutes. Yeah, sounds like a typical Jason Malumbi performance where I say he got rightly stuck in. Yeah, that was a bit of a, an upset. West Brom, as you mentioned, Callum Robinson getting an assist. He scored with inside the first 60 seconds kick on and win that game but Swansea who've not really been great so far this season but obviously it's been a fantastic week from now two wins from two they've really hit the ground um running since the international break climbing up that table as well and obviously Bournemouth really are the talking point of the championship at the moment uh unbeaten at top of the table as you say another good win away to Stoke on Monday on Tuesday night another team that started the season quite well uh Gavin Kilkenny once again another start for him he got a 7 out of 10 rating from Dorset live and Mark Travers, you know, it's been a fantastic start to the season for him. He's really kind of banished them ghosts from that game against Serbia back in Belgrade and really rebuilt his confidence once again. Second consecutive clean sheet, six clean sheets on the on the road in on the bounce now for Bournemouth. That's a club record. So fantastic for him, delighted for him, and really keeps the argument going that we've got a lot of goalkeepers, bright, promising prospects coming up for that number one spot. Yeah, definitely big competition there. And uh, obviously Mark did play against Serbia in that uh, the first qualifier. Obviously wasn't his best game, but look, he's kicked on a lot since. And he's Bournemouth's main man at the minute, as you know, he was back in 2019 when he came uh, that game against Spurs. As we always mention, we thought he was going to kick on then too. Ramsdale obviously came in and changed that. But uh, 
look, he's the main man. Scott Parker obviously fancies him as a goalkeeper, and that's what we want to see. We want to see him playing week in, week out, and keeping clean sheets as well, like he has been. Yeah, and if Bournemouth keep going the way that they are, they'll be in the Premier League next season. And look like they're in a strong place, even at this early stage. They do look, as I touched on already, unbeaten, the most consistent team in that league, and, and probably a little bit step above the likes of even Fulham and West Brom, who'd also be expecting to challenge. Just one last thing, maybe in the championship before we jump onto League One. It's about five or six weeks ago as well. We were talking about an ex Ireland player who's just been sacked from a championship club. Uh, Chris Hewitt and Nottingham Forest. Mick McCarthy, I genuinely thought I watched the second half of that game against um, Swansea on Sunday. Cardiff were awful. They could have actually lost mm-hmm. by a good bit more than 3 0. And I genuinely thought with six defeats in the bounce, that was him gone. I've seen something during the week. He's been given two games to save his job. He's now lost 50% of them two games. They went down 2 or 3 nil to Fulham last night. That's seven straight defeats. You know, it looks like eventually at some stage Mick is probably going to get the the chance presidency as well. I think if Mick McCarthy does go, they'll actually beat no Irish manager in the four divisions in England. Crazy. Crazy. T- t- crazy. I mean, it is there, we should say, but I I, I mm. think eventually it doesn't it doesn't look like he's to be honest, they've lost seven games in a row. I think he's still very fortunate to be in a job. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And they've got uh, Card- they've got Middlesbrough on Saturday morning at half twelve, and that's live on Sky as well. So uh, if you don't fancy a bit of Chelsea and Norwich, you can see how Mick McCarthy fares in trying to save his job at half twelve on Sky Sports. Uh, Middlesbrough, who've won two from two as well during the week, so there's going to be a lot of pressure on that game for them. Um, we can move on into League One maybe now. Uh, I think we've got everything from the Championship yet. Yeah, League One, so obviously we've got... Uh, Saturday and then midweek as well. So maybe, do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to do the midweek or do you want to do the this Saturday? It's up to you. I have both. Uh, I've pretty much both here in terms of any involvement. So I can I can run through both and then you can run through League Two. Then after that, if you want. I don't mind. I, no, look, I'll do League One and then you do League Two. How about that? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, because so. you've done the championship. That was a long one. Um, that was very long. Yeah. Yeah. We start off on Friday night anyway with Burton Albion. They were playing Markham. Thomas O'Connor got a double and Connor Shocknessy in their 3 2 defeat again, the 3 2 win against Markham. So Thomas O'Connor got two goals and Connor Shocknessy got one. Great win for Burton again. Uh, those two lads involved all the time for them by the looks of things. Uh, most notably in League One on the weekend, James McLean got two goals and, a, and an assist, and Will Keane one goal and one assist in. Uh, Wigan's 4-0 route at at Bolton. Owen Doyle was involved for Bolton also. Also, we're we're also well aware of McLean and Ian Evitt's a uh, bit of a dispute they had when McLean was going to sign for Bolton at the start of the season. So obviously good for James McLean to get a double there. And one of them was an absolute cracker as well. If you haven't seen it, have a look at it. Um Wes Houlihan played again, full 90 in Cambridge, two all draw with Ipswich Town. Um they were 2-0 down, and that's a probably good to salvage a result there. Um Aidan O'Brien got a goal for Sunderland in their win at Gillingham. Another good win for Sunderland. They've started very strongly as well. Um, Anthony Scully and Harry Arter both played in Lincoln's 2-1 win over Charlton. Obviously, Harry Arter is playing for Charlton. They're not Lincoln. Scully obviously playing for Lincoln. Marcus Harness did get a goal, but it was a 4-1 defeat for Portsmouth to Rotherham. Uh, Ogbene, Bazunu, Sean Williams also played for both sides there. And uh, one more. I've won more, but... MK Dons, Peter Chioso, Troy Parrott, Warren O'Hara both played in MK Dons 1 0 defeat to Shrewsbury on Saturday. So that's the weekend done. We'll move on to midweek now. There's a couple of bits of action there too. Um, where are we? Okay. Aidan McGeady got an assist in Sunderland's 4 0 win over Crew. Another great win for Sunderland. They're flying at the minute. Thomas O'Connor got another goal in their two. They won, they won two from two. They won against Fleetwood on Tuesday. Another got that's three goals in two games for him now. Uh, Mark Sykes got a goal in Oxford's win over Shrewsbury Town, and Peter Chioso. Peter Chioso scored for MK Dons. They won at Wigan, and Will Keane got an assist in that as well. James McLean, Troy Parrott, and Warren O'Hara are also involved for both sides there. And that's all I have from League One. Do you have anything to add yourself or? No, that's pretty much it. I have everything here as well that, that you had suppose the only thing is a, a very bad week we talk about a very good week for Queen and Kelleher two clean sheets a design, eight goals conceded in two matches two thumping defeats for Portsmouth yeah I didn't want to mention it but uh, look eight goals in oh, two no. games says it yeah. all really doesn't it 
Um, I didn't see any of the highlights, but I'm sure Gavin was at fault, wasn't at fault for any of those eight goals. So, look, that's all to say from that. <laughs> yeah, just even as well, briefly as well, Justin Thomas O'Connor flying it now. Uh, four goals this season for uh, for Burton Albion. And obviously, he's really hit the ground running since they've come back from the international break. And Will Keane, you know, there was obviously a lot of talk about him when he got called up to the last squad. But I think, you know, he showed his form pre the October international window while he was called up. And I think he's definitely hammered at home even since he's come back from the international break. You know, and a goal and two assists in two games. I think that has him up now to six goals and four assists for the season. So he's absolutely hit the ground running. And I think the big question for him now, again, will be not just a case of, I think, trying squad but didn't try to make match day squads i think he probably would have been very disappointed not to have at least make the match day squad for the qatar match move on to league two not really much to report on here i'm just going to give you the lowdown on who done what as opposed to telling you players that were involved because we'll be here for a good while more just from the weekend jamie bowden uh got an assist in oldham's 3-0 win over stevenage and corey o'keefe also got an assist in rochdale's 2-2 draw away to swindon town and then from midweek, Gary Spain, former uh, Limerick FC player, uh, of course, now obviously known as Treaty United. Paulie O'Connor scored what proved to be a consolation goal for Bradford as they were at the wrong end of a 3 1 defeat away to Hartlepool. That, of course, is Paulie's second goal of the season. Good stuff. League two is always very bare. I don't know very what it bare. is about it. Very, yeah, very yeah. Bare, yeah. I think it's because we don't know a lot about it as well, is that you're kind of going digging and you're seeing all these names and you're kind of checking. Oh, like even for me, with some of them anyway, like Paddy O'Connor is definitely Irish, so I definitely know straight away. Yeah, he used to play for Leeds as well, so. Yeah, yeah, but then you're looking at some of the other teams and you see, oh, he might be Irish, he might be Irish, and you're kind of guessing sometimes. But obviously you are you would be well aware of some of the lads who are involved there. Obviously Alan George playing for Colchester as well, but not much going for him at the minute. Um, we move on into Scotland anyway. I've only got two small bits of info there. Not much went on. Uh. The lads at St. Mirren, Aldham, Connor Rowan and Jamie McGrath, Alan Power, Connor McCarthy and Joe Shockens, he all played in another win for them over Ross County. 3-2 this time. None of them involved in goals or assists, but involved in the win. And uh, they're flying at the minute, St. Mirren. Yeah, that's a hat-trick of victories for now. I think it makes it six games unbeaten in a row. And, you know, probably... Uh, uh, I forget the word I was going to say there, but probably um, a danger of repeating myself here. Um, but just... You know, the job that Jim Govan is doing there is absolutely phenomenal. And once again, they look very much on course to hold their own this season. And as I touched on, I think, in one of the previous shows, I think the big aim now for Sarah Mirren is when the end of the season split comes, they want to be in that top six, I think, as opposed to the bottom six. Yeah, definitely. Completely agree. Uh, one other bit of information I have from Scotland is that Ryan Sweeney, Johnny Hayes and Killian Sheridan all played in Dundee's 2-1 win over Aberdeen. Um I'm not sure how many games Dundee have won, but it's definitely one of the first they've won anyway because all I've seen them so far this season is defeats and draws. So a uh, good win for them there at home to Aberdeen. Uh, do you have anything to add, Jay? Yeah, just one other little bit as well, and I even have a bit of an insight of a source for someone who was at this game. Uh, Jake Doyle Hayes played 90 minutes for Hibs as they suffered a heavy 3-0 defeat at home to United. It's all starting to go a little bit pear-shaped the Edinburgh club. They were flying out until a couple of weeks ago, but that's now back-to-back defeats either side of their two-week break. Uh, the Edinburgh Evening News giving him a 5 out of 10 rating, saying that he plugged away in the middle of the park, uh, but found a tough going when United were in full flow. Another who has had better games. And I actually know a couple of lads that were over in Edinburgh uh, for the weekend, and they took this game in. And I was chatting to one of them, uh, Rory Kilkenny. And I won't repeat the exact words he used. It's a bit early uh, to describe Jack Doyle or Jake Doyle, his performance, but uh, he said he didn't have much of an impact. Um, and he was actually also surprised at that result as well. But uh, thanks for that wonderful uh, insight, uh, Rory Kilkenny and to all the other lads from uh, CP Ajax uh, Football Club in Roscommon that were at the game as well. Good stuff, good stuff. Always good to get an insight from uh, yeah. live sources. Um, do you want to quickly run through Europe maybe, or will I do that? I don't mind. I can do my favourite league in the world, the MLS uh, I can let you do the MLS, yeah. So and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, do yeah. My, of, I'll do the rest. I'll do the rest. Favorite league in the world. Yeah. Uh, just we actually should also add as well from Scotland. Uh, Liam Scales came on as a substitute for Celtic on Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon of all things, uh, in their Europa League victory, two 0 victory against Fair and Faros, which I suppose it 
puts them a little bit back in contention to get out of that group, but more so, realistically speaking, they probably should now at least get third place in that group and at least have the way for Conference League to fall back into in the new year. But I don't want fan, so this, as I said, there'll still be harboring aspirations of making the knockout stages for the Europa League. Uh, so the rest of Europe, so Josh Cullen played the 90 minutes as Anderlecht drew 2 all with St. Trubden. Uh, uh, it's now six games unbeaten for Anderlecht, but the last four of them have all been draws. So they've kind of, you know, been stuttering along, you could say, the last kind of couple of weeks. It leaves them eight in the table on 17 points after 11 games. I think there's something like eight points off, off top spot. So even at this early stage of the season, it looks like they're more so going to battle out, I think, for... Europa League spot as opposed to any potential Champions League or title spots. Um, Green Carey got an assist in CSK Sofia's 3 2 win over Botes uh, Povdiv. I hope I pronounced that right. That was a home victory for CSK Sofia. They've had an unbelievable start to the season. They're unbeaten after eight games. They've only dropped two points, so seven wins and one draw. And that's four consecutive wins. They're only two points off the leaders. Um, Luda Goretz, but I think they've actually played a game extra. I think I was even looking at that table as well. Like CSK Sevilla have three games in hand, even on some other teams. They've missed out a lot of games at the start of the season because of their Europa League, or not Europa League, the UEFA Conference League qualifier commitments. And Saka was said he played the full game as AIK lost to local rivals Hanbury 1 0 on Sunday afternoon. Philip Connor, of course, the Irish journalist that lives over in Sweden. Uh, he was providing great updates in this game on his Twitter. Um, so he was saying that Sack started off on the right in this game, moved on to the left in, for a while in the second half, but returned the game on the right. Overall, he had a pretty good impact, had a couple of chances, got a couple of good crosses, and came really good, came really involved towards the end and was kind of pushing the initiative for AIK to get the equaliser. But overall, his uh, side put in a pretty poor performance on the day, going by uh, Phillips' uh, tweets. And that result now leaves them third on the table on 44 points. Uh, they're only behind Malmo on Jules Garden on goal difference, though. Seven games left in that season. It does look like, as we've already touched on, that is going to be a tasty. T- yeah, definitely, I agree. You look at um, even the team in fourth as well. They're only two points off the three of them ahead of them. as well. That's insane for this time of the season. Like, you know, the only other time I'd seen that in the last one was in France one year, I think. There were seven of them going for top spot. And one team was, I think it was that team, Amiens, they were seventh and they got a 90th minute winner and they went from seventh to second to get automatically promoted. And then everyone, one team dropped out and it was just, it was mad. Like, and then there was playoffs and stuff. But uh, great to see, great entertainment as well for those fans as well. Maybe we can get a bit of a look at it towards the end of the season if Zach is, if AIK and Zach are still well up there, which by the looks of it, they obviously will be. Um, we'll move on to the best league in the world now, the MLS, um, the Franchise League. Uh, the Irish-American soccer player is what I've got from this. Shane O'Neill got a goal for Seattle against Vancouver. They won 4-1. Now, the reason I say him, maybe he's played for America at underage. He was born in Middleton and Cork. So, look, you can't get much Irish, much more Irish than that. Um that's all I've got from the MLS. I think, oh, Derek Williams played in LA Galaxy's 3 0 win. They won 3 0. I'm not sure who it was against, but they won 3 0. Clean sheet for him. He was subbed off towards the end, but uh, he was injured for a bit there as well or suspended or something. So it's good to see him back playing again. Yeah, I'm, I must have been a double game week in the MLS because I have different sets of. Uh, yeah, there was. There. They were playing. Oh, yeah. Week. Uh, yeah. Um, I just have because I, I have the weekend results here. So John Gallagher came off the last eleven minutes of Austin FC's one 0 defeat to Minnesota United. Um, as we touched on, Austin FC having a poor season this year, so they remain bottom of the Western Conference. Derek William made his return from injury uh, at the weekend uh, and played the full game in Timbers two one at home. They're sixth in the Western Conference on forty two points. I think it's the top seven that go into the playoffs. So they're two points ahead of eight. There's five games left in the regular season, so. LA Galaxy still with a do. And Shane O'Neill, uh, who we touched on there as well, he played 86 minutes in Seattle Sounders, 2 1 loss to Houston Dynamo, but they still remain well top of the Western Conference. So they definitely will be at the end of season playoffs. Of course, five games left now in the regular season there. And yeah, the Shane O'Neill one, I think we we had this debate uh, before. He still, I think, is eligible for. doesn't seem to be coming into the reckoning. Uh, 
too much for either team, but we'll still keep him on this list anyway for the show. Yeah, apologies. Actually, that was uh, the week the week of the international break. He got that goal. That's why ah. you're looking at it. It's just that league is just mad. The fixtures are all over the place, and especially when you're looking for them, it's like, oh, they played here, they played here, they played here. So like, I don't know. It must be knackered. Um. Anyway, I think I think that's everything, and we got everything. We haven't missed anything. I don't think. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, just obviously. Tonight in the European Action in the Conference League or Europa League, as we mentioned, Matt Dart is actually injured for a Spurs game against Fisher's Armin. I uh, can't remember the top man who they're playing, but uh, hopefully Brian Carey will be involved for CSK Sofia and to touch on Celtic have already played this week and Liam Scales came on. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Next week, thankfully, won't be as busy as a show because there's no double game weeks in the English football leagues. It's the Carabell Cup or League Cup or Milk Cup or Worthington Cup or Coca-Cola Cup or whatever the hell cup. I think it was even the Capital One Cup there at one stage as well. Whatever the hell cup you want to call it. Uh, the sponsorship sponsor, cup. Yeah, whatever sponsor we'll take, we want cup uh, is on next week and it's down to the round of 16. So we won't have as much to thankfully get through. I, well, yeah. not that I have any problem, but uh, so as, as, you, as you can see from my uh, spiel there from the championship, it, it does take a lot out of you. Yeah, you're trawling through this and that, and as you you go and get your uh, your match reviews as well, and I mean, sure, look, you're reading all sorts there. Um, I in my opinion, I thought the Carling Cup sounded best to be honest, and I thought they should have stuck with it when it was there because I got so used to it. But uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Carling Cup action next midweek, and obviously we'll have the roundup from the weekend as well, the coming weekend, and the Europeans. Hopefully, Graham Carey does well. I think they're playing Bodo Glimt, which is another fantastic name for a football club can i just say um anyway that's it guys thanks very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and uh thanks very much jerry again always a pleasure no worries paul thanks guys see you soon take care